morning everyone, or afternoon or evening, and um, my name is Caroline Seymour, I'm the VP of Product Marketing here at Zerto, and I want to thank you for joining us today, I know people are still uh, joining the webinar, but um, what we're going to be doing today is sharing some results from a new study from Forrester, which is the Forrester Total Economic Impact Study. And Zerto commissioned Forrester to do this report on the IT resilience platform. And so you'll be hearing how customers are seeing an average of 279% ROI with the platform. Now, uh, what we have done also, if you look at the chat down on the right-hand side, I've actually incorporated the link um, so that you can actually download a full copy of the report um, so that will be available. So what I'd like to do, though, um, is to say how how delighted I am to introduce Dean Davison, who is the uh, principal consultant from Forrester, whom I've had the pleasure to work with on this project. And Dean has extensive experience um, in two, two aspects, one on the buy side of technology, where he's been advising customers in purchasing and implementing solutions, including interacting with many CIOs on six different continents. His, his experience also includes the sell side work in sales focused marketing functions like pricing strategy, uh, competitive intelligence, product marketing, customer insights, and market analysis. And he has interviewed hundreds of executives to understand how they benefit and how they quantify value from products and solution partners. So welcome, Dean, and thank you so much for joining. Thanks, Caroline. Excellent. And so Dean is going to be explaining what a TEI report is and how it helps you. And he'll talk about the analysis and the results from the findings. And uh, we will have opportunity to answer questions at the end. But if you have questions throughout the webinar, if you look on your right-hand side of the screen, there is a questions box. So you can actually enter the questions as we go through the webinar. But before I hand over to Dean, I just wanted to explain what the IT resilience platform is and can do for you. And I just want to make sure everybody on the call has the right context. And so a lot of you will know that or be very familiar with Zerto and understand this as disaster recovery, which we introduced back in 2011 when we launched hypervisor-based replication. And it really did completely change how disaster recovery was done. But since then, we have evolved our offering well beyond just disaster recovery to deliver an IT resilience platform. And we did announce this last year at our user conference, ZertoCon in May. And so I just want to spend a minute talking about what, what does this really mean? Because the platform actually represents what we see as a big shift in the market, a shift to converged disaster recovery, backup, and also uh, cloud mobility. And if you think about backup and disaster recovery and how they're converging, and if you think about, say, recovering from ransomware or file corruptions or deletions, we know that that can be done using backup technology. But using backup technology, it's slow and it can be error prone versus using replication-based disaster recovery tools that provides a faster and much better level of granularity for recovering that data and application, minimizing the time, data loss, and also the costs associated to that. And then if you think about cloud and, and how that is driving technology convergence, and it's really changing the game because people are starting to use cloud for backup because, as we know, legacy backup is, is costly and it's expensive to maintain. And so cloud provides a way to be able to help reduce some of the costs and complexity around compute. And then cloud for DR. We have many customers, for example, are looking uh, for cloud uh, for disaster recovery and using Zerto for disaster recovery in the cloud. And that obviously provides with the compute and the storage on demand to drive more cost efficiency and maintenance-free DR if you're using a service provider as well. And then lastly, when you think about cloud, is the mobility of applications, whether you're migrating applications to, from, and between clouds with consistency and, and that protection 
Um, and that also requires replication technologies that were once used for DR and recovery assurance tools. So you can see this converging of, of technologies. And so what we have done is to really um, converge all of these sort of key use cases of disaster recovery, backup, and also cloud mobility with hybrid cloud into one single, simple, scalable platform. But as you see here, the platform does actually way more than that. Yes, it does. It is a converged solution that solves those three pillar use cases, but it has many more capabilities to really help you replace multiple products in your environment, as you see here, and you'll hear more from Dean in a moment. And when you look at these different capabilities, so if we sort of pull sort of disaster recovery and backup together, because we provide you with that DVR-like capability or ability to re really just rewind back and resume from any point in time, to protect against logical and, and hardware failures, human mistakes, natural disasters. And of course, recovery um, can be hyper granular and allows you to resume from just seconds ago or days, months, or even years. Multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, mobility or portability, whichever way you look at it. So to ensure that say, we have the capability that you, you are protected as you go to, from, and between clouds without any vendor lock-in. And then migration capability, the capability to move across your on-premises hypervisor environment and or clouds or both, and without any vendor lock-in on storage or the hardware. Then we have the built-in orchestration and automation, because to be honest, if you think about it, it's very hard to modernize and innovate if you can't automate. And so therefore, we've built into the platform that orchestration capability. And then lastly, the analytics capability to provide complete visibility and control across your multi-site, multi-cloud environment, ensuring that your business SLAs are met. And so with that sort of base understanding, what I'd like to do is hand over uh, to Dean, where he'll walk us through the TEI. So just bear with me one minute. Um, whilst I give you the control, Dean, here you go. Thank you, Caroline, and uh, thank you for that introduction. Uh, the, the, for, the role of Forrester in this case, as Caroline indicated, was to interview some customers because what was happening is the Zerto was finding that it had these great customer stories. And being naturally skeptical, as all of us are, uh, some of the people inside Zerto said, you know, we really need to validate this. We really need to prove this and make sure we're not, uh, as is sometimes said, drinking too much of our own Kool-Aid. And so they commissioned Forrester, and that's where I come in and was able to engage um, and walk them through what we call a total economic impact uh, study. So what I want to do is take a few minutes here and talk to you about what is a TEI or a total economic impact study. We'll talk about some of the results that we found, how we did the analysis, and uh, what what conclusions we were able to draw, and then we'll have some Q&A towards the end. I do want to emphasize that this presentation is an abbreviated version of a more comprehensive study that you can get from Zerto, and I believe the link to it is posted in, in the chat uh, in, your, um, in the webinar platform. Um, and, and you can see the study, you can see the assumptions, you can see the way we did calculations, and you can adapt it to your organization. Uh, because as you'll see, the companies we interviewed uh, varied quite widely. And so some of you might have hundreds of VMs, and some of you may have thousands or even tens of thousands. And the ability and the need to scale the assumptions that we found, the, the assumptions we made based on the interviews, uh, will obviously be necessary. So we'll walk through this and we'll explain a little bit about how we did that. But before we do that, I want to just take one minute and say the reason that this this methodology is becoming so important is that more and more buyers are go making formal business cases when they make technology purchases. Uh, between the somewhat important and the very important on the left, that covers 93% of buyers. 
Um, and so this is an important thing. And it's also important that we look beyond just the uh, traditional roles and capabilities of IT costs and IT cost savings, but also look at the impact on the business organization and look at risk and strategic implications because decisions today can impact you several years down the road. To that point, um, one of the things that uh, that we look at is we look at benefits and costs, but we look at both hard and, and soft benefits and costs. A hard benefit or cost is something that trickles through to the financial statements or the, you know, the, the income statement or the balance sheet of an organization. It's a real cost savings. It's money that they didn't have to spend that they would have previously been spending. Uh, it's the same with costs. It's money that they didn't have to spend or that they were now incurring. Uh, then we also look at flexibility. Flexibility is like coming to a fork in the road, and if you turn left at a fork, you reach certain destinations. If you turn right, you uh, have a, a different set of destinations that are possible. And as we look at different technology investments, we find that same uh, type of idea applies, that decisions today can have implications down the road. And we'll talk about some of those things with Zerto. Lastly, we risk adjust everything because uh, every uh, financial person today will tell you that a certain percentage of IT projects and IT investments don't work. They don't pan out. They don't realize the expected benefits. And so what we've done is with each of the variables that we've looked at, we risk adjust to determine what is the expected or consistency at which organizations are able to experience or realize this particular benefit. So we'll walk through that. Lastly, I just want to throw out uh, a little bit about the methodology. We do some due diligence. We at Forrester, we interviewed uh, some of the people at Zerto. We also interviewed some of the Forrester analysts who are experts in, in disaster recovery and backup and, and uh, IT resilience. And then really, we focused the analysis on the customers. What did the customers tell us? And then based on those customer results, we, we created what we call a composite organization, which I'll talk about in more detail in just a minute. And then we build a financial model in a case study and we get to where we are today, where it's finished, it's wrapped up, and we're now presenting and delivering it to the market. Throughout this process, I want to clarify that yes, the customers that we interviewed were provided to us or introduced to us uh, from, uh, from Zerto, but that Zerto did not participate in any, in any of the customer interviews and that Forrester retains editorial control of the, of the study and that this uh, presentation does not provide any endorsement of Zerto. So that being said, let's get to the substance. What did we find uh, about Zerto? What we found is that Zerto enabled significant reductions in both planned and unplanned downtime, and it reduced the staffing requirements for both disaster recovery and backup capabilities, as well as facilitated uh, some some surprise migration projects that uh, came up and it was interesting that each one of the companies that we interviewed seemed to have at least one major migration project that was uh, came out of the came out of nowhere and uh, caught them off guard and would have required significant resources uh, if they hadn't uh, had a tool like Zerto to help facilitate that that type of change so as we went through this, um, you know, we heard different stories and different challenges. And one of the one of the most compelling uh, quotes that uh, that I wanted to share with you today was one one executive. Now he was in a manufacturing company, and he was a senior engineer. And he said, "We live today in an always-on society. Whenever we do any kind of techno technical change or upgrade, we must work around major holidays, and even those windows of time are getting shorter and shorter." The expectation is that ERP systems, file servers, printers, and every, and every other device will always be available. And that's indicative of the type of environment that I believe most of you are finding yourself in. And it's, it's that type of pressure that tools like Zerto and IT resilience platforms tend to be making a powerful impact. So let's talk a little bit about what Forrester found in its analysis. First of all, we did find that the average organization realized a return on investment of 279% uh, percent, uh, over a three-year period, which is when we do the analysis. The net present value of our analysis resulted in a $4.4 million benefit, and the payback period was uh, very short in less than three months, uh, which is very common for cloud-based tools in today's marketplace. 
how, so let's talk a little bit about how we got to this, uh, these types of numbers and how we were able to reach them. First of all, we started by interviewing four different Zerto customers. One was a global pharmaceutical, one was a financial services company, one was manufacturing, and there was one that was a North American uh, financial services company. Now, as you look at this list, you can see that there's a wide variation between the sizes of the organizations, one with only 225 VMs and one with over 14,000. Um, and so you see that as we, as we do this, we have to build a set of assumptions around which we can do that. And that's typically called the composite organization. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's talk about what these companies told us at a very high level. First of all, what they told us is that they, they experienced a significant, a significant amount of both planned and unplanned downtime. Uh, also, that they were struggling with a high degree of errant backup jobs that either didn't get completed or that took longer than expected and typically interfered with uh, business productivity or, or business employees the following day. And that, of course, there's the ever, the ever challenging issue of dealing with ransomware attacks, which in most of the organizations we interviewed weren't catastrophic ransomware attacks, such as, you know, the major system for the entire company, or as I saw in the news recently, Recently, a healthcare organization where all patient information had been compromised uh, and, and was subject to ransomware uh, for a healthcare organization, but they were smaller ransomware attacks. One system, one department, one division, one geography, and uh, they, they just needed a systematic way to deal with that. So one of the things that they told us consistently about Zerto was that they were able to launch a proof of concept, a POC, and that they were able to put that into, into and test the Zerto capabilities. But then what was wonderful, and every single one of the clients emphasized this, is that the Zerto environment migrated very naturally from the proof, proof of concept over into a production environment. Uh, they didn't have to start over to create that production environment. What they found is that they, they in addition to the benefits we're gonna talk about, that they had an, an amazing ability to manage data and applications remotely. Uh, and I'll share some quotes with you that emphasize these points in a few minutes. Uh, they reduced the risk of things like upgrades and migrations that were always coming their way and seemed to surprise them or, or come out of the blue. Uh, they were able to deal with ransomware issues much more quickly because they had they were able to do recoveries that were up to minutes rather than hours or days. Uh, and they were able to automate a significant amount of the disaster recovery for their VMs. And it gave them a single tool set for disaster recovery and backup. So let me share with you a couple of quotes that these organizations shared. And I won't read these, um, but one of them said, you know, after we had Zerto up and running, we had a ransomware hit. Rather than taking two weeks to recover, it literally took us one half of one second to be back up and running. Now, I assume in that one half of one second, he's talking about the keystroke uh, that the, the person had to, to go through. It probably actually took a little longer than one half of one second to recognize the ransomware, devise the plan, and actually push the button. But that's the kind of response that uh, a, senior, a senior engineer in a manufacturing company said to Forrester. Um, and it's it's gone a long way. It not only simplified the recovery process, but it's uh, enabling the IT professionals to build trust with the business execs, making the business executives feel comfortable that uh, the IT organization has technology and methods to recover and maintain ongoing uh, business uh, capabilities and business continuity, especially as we talked about early in this always on society that we live in today. Um, a couple of other quotes, you know, that the, the other uh, other companies we interviewed shared. Um, you know, a t one was about a migration. A typical uh, migration would have involved three different teams across our company. It would have required at least eight hours of downtime for the business. Using Zerto, we were able to migrate thousands of VMs with no late data loss and literally just a reboot. A reboot. One of the smaller organizations said, "I manage the environment myself." because we'd asked him, uh, obviously, how many employees he had managing his disaster recovery environment. And he said, I manage it myself using a mobile app. It has alerts that warn me of problems. When everything is green, I'm good. Um, you know, so the, the, the experience that people are going from, from the before environment to modern IT resilience platforms like Zerto is a significant transition 
uh, and it changes the lives of, of, of their work and uh, of their e efficacy of, uh, in a typical day. So now let's talk in more detail about the financial analysis itself. So to do this, as I've mentioned a couple of times already that we built this thing called a composite organization. As I indicated earlier, there's a no, the, the, the sizes of the companies that we interviewed varied from 225 VMs up to, to more than 14,000. So there's a huge range of sizes and complexity of companies. Some of them were geographically narrow, such as just North America. Some of them, others uh, that we interviewed, were complex and worked on a global scale. So to build a single financial model based on the that is representative of the experience of those companies, we had to build some assumptions. So we started with an organization that has 1,000 VMs, and those VMs are increasing at a rate of 20% per year. We also assume that the organization is mostly virtualized at about 90%. It still has some lingering legacy applications and capabilities that are on-premises, but that's the, uh, that, that's the holdout, uh, the, 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 the minority rather than the majority uh, in their case. And the other thing that we assumed is something we heard a lot in the interviews, that they do a quarterly disaster recovery testing. Uh, and that's not just for the IT organization in many cases. Uh, many of the companies interviewed, not all, but most of them that we interviewed, indicated that they go through a, a, a disaster recovery testing and a rollover capability that involves not only the IT organization, but the relevant business executives and business users to make sure that they are able to uh, function and continue to operate in the new and changed environment when it comes around. So with those assumptions, <clears throat> and again, the reason that we have built this and the reason you want to go back to the, the more comprehensive study is that you can adjust all of the assumptions all throughout. You can say, well, we only have 200 VMs or we have 10,000 VMs. And you can start to adjust the math and say, based on the companies that Forrester interviewed, the impact on my organization would be X. So let's walk through what we found based on these assumptions. First of all, we were able to identify six different benefit categories, and we're going to walk through each of these individually in just a minute. Some of them were substantial, like the reduced cost of unplanned outages and the reduced cost of even planned downtime that were worth millions of dollars each. Uh, over on the far right were some more nominal uh, benefits, such as the reduced cost of managing migrations or avoiding the cost of managing backups and errant backup jobs. Um, and so we're going to walk through each of these. Um, but those, that, that, that at a high level shows you what the benefit categories are for an organization. The first one that we really want to talk about is unplanned outages. Um, here, among the companies that we interviewed, some had as little as four outages per month, and some had uh, actually dozens of out outages per month. And so the level of, um, of unplanned downtime was rather significant. <coughs> We did assume across and throughout this study that the average downtime was about $10,000 per hour. Now, obviously, that number is going to vary widely based on which type of application is down. For example, if Amazon's web you know, interface for making purchases was down, the cost would be millions or maybe even tens of millions of dollars per hour. Um, or if your email system goes down, maybe there's a very low cost. So again, we're using an average here. Um, but again, doing the math on that as we, as we work through uh, starting with 1,000 VMs in the first year, and again, they're growing at 20% 20, 20 per year, which results in just over 1,400 VMs by the third year. Uh, and we assumed just that one, that just that 10% of those VMs would have one hour of downtime per month. And then doing the math takes us to a reduced cost of outages just in the first year of $1 million. And over three years, we have a present value of uh, $2.5 million in um, avoided uh, downtime. The second benefit that we want to talk about is planned downtime. So here, this is for patches, upgrades, new releases, and things. Um, and what the organizations told us is that, on average, um, the downtime that they needed uh, was to bring servers down for about eight hours. Now, in the past, they had windows of time, such as Saturday night to Sunday morning, where they were able to do that, <coughs> or even weekend time, where they were able to 
bring the system down uh, in a narrower geographical footprint. Uh, but what they did is they averaged about one per month of those. But again, back to this always on society that they're in, those windows were shrinking. They were becoming less common. They were less able to find windows of time when they had eight hours of downtime uh, without shutting down certain business activities and planning to disrupt business. Again, we used the same down with the same cost per hour of ten thousand uh, dollars, which results in an annual cost in the first year of nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars, or a benefit over three years of uh, just over two million dollars. The third benefit that we were able to isolate was the avoided cost of software tools. So obviously, uh, as the organization implemented and moved more and more of its disaster recovery and backup operations over to Zerto, it had previous tools for backup, disaster recovery, and other things that it didn't need to purchase anymore. And so it was able to eliminate those licenses. We did the math using a perpetual license mode, which means that the organization buys a license once and then pays an annual maintenance fee on that. Um, and, and we, so what we began to do then is show that, again, the disaster recovery tools, uh, the, the avoided cost of previous tools was about $590,000 over three years. The backup software that they no longer needed to purchase was about $266,000. And in the second year, we put in one of these surprise migration projects that the IT professionals told us about. And we put in there an, an amount of $85,000 that the organization would have had to spend to manage that migration if it hadn't had Zerto. So the total present value reaches uh, $776,000, and this benefit was pretty consistent across all of the organizations. So we only we gave it a very low risk adjustment of only 5%. Uh, but this is a story that we heard, and again, this is the avoided license costs that you're able to, that you no longer need to pay because you've got uh, better capabilities in place today. The fourth benefit, as we uh, get into the get over the hump and into the second half of these benefits is the reduced cost of disaster recovery operations. Now, again, this is the quarterly testing that these organizations were doing. And what they told us is that on average, there were eight employees who would go through disaster recovery exercises each quarter. And that would usually take three days. And usually they'd start on a Friday and work through the weekend so that they were they could test things that were non be non disruptive to the business or as little as the disruption as possible, but to go through this so they, that totaled seventy seven hundred and sixty eight hours uh, each year, uh, which equates to point zero point four full time equivalent employees. So over the course of a year, they were saving. Um, you know, 2.4 FTEs per year, which using an $85,000 salary um, results in a savings of $204,000. Now, again, this is an example of where we use a standard salary. You may be in a location where the, the right salary is sixty or $65,000, or you may be in a higher cost location where the salary may be a hundred to $110,000. Um, and you, that's where you would want to adjust the model for your potential savings to your specific geography. The fifth benefit, and we're starting to get to the benefits now that are fairly nominal, but we highlight them to, to bring out some of the capabilities of Zerto. One is the avoided cost of managing backups. Each of the organizations, a frequent story that we heard, was this idea of either backup jobs that ran longer than expected or that, that failed and then had to be restarted by a backup admin in the morning. Um, each of the organizations, uh, or at least for our composite organization, it, its size had two backup admins, and they typically spent about two and a half hours every morning just dealing with this kind of stuff. Uh, the, the errant jobs, the recoveries, the solving things that were in the way. And so taking that and eliminating that time that they had to spend every day was a savings of 0.6 FTEs um, or $51,000 in the first year or a three-year present value of $114,000. Lastly, the last benefit that we wanted to talk about is the reduced cost of managing some of these migrations. We already talked about the avoided cost of software tools to help manage the migrations, but this gets at the cost of the staffing. Um, so this isn't a huge item, but they do come up. Um, the Again, 
0.1 FTEs of uh, managing eight hours of downtime per year. Um, and so as we begin to go through that, we look at a total cost of about $66,000 uh, in cost. I actually, I think I said per year, but I think that's eight hours per month. My apologies. Lastly, so the, those are the benefit categories, and, and we can go into any of those in more detail. Again, you can find more detail in the, in the uh, comprehensive study. Lastly, to do a return on investment, we have to have both benefits and costs. And so the cost is, you know, Zerto isn't free. Uh, it is not, uh, it, it, it does carry with it a cost. And so as we looked at that, we, we calculated the pricing for a 1,000 BM environment that grows at 20%. We also used a perpetual license and an annual maintenance fee of 25% annually, which resulted in a total of about $1.6 million over a three-year basis. In addition, it took a little bit of time to implement it. Not much, but two employees spent about half of their time for three months working to implement and then configure Zerto, uh, which had an upfront cost of about $22,000 in labor. And that is how we came to do all of the math and reach the calculations of a 279% ROI and a payback period that is less than three months. And that is the total economic impact of Zerto. And with that, Caroline, I send it back to you. Thank you, Dean. Um, that, was, that was great, and I really appreciate you taking the time today to share these results. And I hope that those attending um, today found this valuable to understand the benefits derived from the IT resilience platform. And as we mentioned, um, the report is actually, if you look at the chat box on the, um, uh, on the right hand side of your screen, you will see that I put a link in there that will take you to the actual full report, which is, is available. And also, uh, in addition, what I've done is to include the infographic too. So I think that this, this report can provide tremendous value as you put your business case together for the, for the Zerto IT business platform. And so what I'd like to do is just take a few minutes to really just summarize um, um, around what we do at Zerto in relation to what you've heard today on the report. Um, First of all, we talked earlier at the very beginning uh, really around that the sort of the core use case or core pillars really is, is for the platform. And that's around continuous DR and backup so that you can actually protect against any disruption. Dean talked about you know the planned and unplanned um, benefits that, um, uh, that customers had derived from the platform. So unplanned outages of 2.5 million and plan downtime by two million, that, that, that significant saving. And as you know, you know, you, as in, within your company, you need to really strive to deliver that always on customer experience. So the backup and the DR solution that you have must be continuous and not periodic or snapshot based. And this is really the only way to ensure continuous availability with no downtime or data loss. And you heard Dean talk about one of the customers in the report who's so saying we live in you know an always-on society. So continuous DR and backup is a critical element uh, for a resilient uh, IT, and so that's p core pillar of the platform itself. The second piece too is around workload mobility. So whether you're looking at migrations, and we specifically talked about migration findings in the report and the benefits. But it's also about consolidations or moving to new infrastructure. And that's across on-premises uh, or, or it could be actually cloud. So the importance here is about having the confidence to be able to move your business applications and your data workflows with ease, without risk, and, and you know to be absolutely protected 100% 100, 100 along the way. And then, of course, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud. Most customers that we talk to have a multi-cloud strategy because I think we all know that all clouds are not equal and that different workloads may work better on one cloud versus another. And perhaps the cloud that you choose today may not be the cloud you choose tomorrow. So where it's critical that you, you need to really leverage the cloud to accelerate your business and, and truly take advantage of what the cloud offers, it's important to ensure that you have the freedom to choose your cloud and be able to move to and from and between clouds. 
So we provide that as the, sort of the core pillar within the platform. And these pillars alone ensure that you can withstand any disruption planned around plans, leverage new technology seamlessly into your environment, and move your business forward without disruption and with, with confidence. So here what you see, um, because over and above the core, core pillars that I've talked about, I'm showing here all of the use cases that our customers are using Zerto. And it's interesting because what we find um, is that customers that purchase Zerto for one use case, after seeing its power, quickly start to use Zerto for many of the other use cases, use case needs that they have. And once you have the enterprise edition, there is no additional cost or add-ons that you actually need to provide all of these capabilities. And Dean talked about, and when you download the report and take a look at it, the, the report highlights many examples as well. Um, and uh, I, I really love the quote that Dean referenced earlier about the um, uh, ransomware. They said that uh, after we had Zerto up and running, we, they had another ransomware attack. Rather than taking two weeks to recover, that was before Zerto, it literally took us one and a half seconds to be back up and running. I think that's, that's phenomenal and a good testament to, to how we can help solve for ransomware attacks. And we've got many other examples and use cases around that as well. And then he also sort of, you know, highlighted around migrations. Um, so a typical, I like one about the typical migration would have involved three different teams across the, the company. And in the end, it would have required at least eight hours of downtime for the business. And using Zerto, we're able to migrate thousands of VMs with no data loss and literally just a reboot. So those are just an examples of, of, of a validation point. But I just wanted to share with you the additional use cases that you see here that we can absolutely support with, with the platform. So let's just talk about the platform and, and look at that a little bit more in detail and how it works, because at the very core and the foundation, and I like to think of this as the engine of the platform, is continuous data protection. And with the best of breed replication that we have um, introduced back in 2011, it really does deliver the tightest RTOs and RPOs to ensure that you know when something happens, recovery is quick. Or perhaps when you're doing, making some proactive changes like, like light migrations, um, it is possible to rewind so the change to the commit. And then with continuous journal-based recovery, what that does is to allow you to rewind to any point in time with protection against your logical failures, not just disasters, but the recovery is granular. And this is where it can be from seconds ago unlike backup or snapshots that um, you might be using that could be four hours a day or one, one day out of date. And of course, your recovery can be your site, your application, your VMs, or your individual files. And now recovery, of course, is not just about your data. It's about protecting all of your key business services. And so the platform uses application consistency groups, which we call virtual protection groups. And what this does is to enable you to protect your applications with all of the dependencies. And so these CPGs allow you to pre-configure recovery workflows, so the boot order, the re for fast recovery without any manual intervention. Zerta now supports both the short-term recovery and long-term retention. And Zerta 7, which will be launching on April the 16th, at 16th, adds in new powerful long-term retention capabilities, so you can retain data for as long as you need going back years. Um, and, what, and actually, when you think about the TEI study and what Dean was talking about, we're already seeing many customers today that are solving for backup use cases and using Zerto. Uh, to replace more of their old legacy backup tools, providing additional sa savings. And there's several examples in the report of how customers are struggling um, that they interviewed with incomplete backup jobs that basically just never got completed. Um, and um, 
And then as we look at the rest of the platform, you went the wrong way with them, the orchestration and automation. We've actually built in this orchestration automation to, to enable faster management of workloads and at scale. And so what this does is to enable you to have minimal touch, allowing IT to shift resources to focus on innovation and, and implementing services that really help drive the business uh, more efficiently. So that's from whether it's cloud to migration to consolidations. You can constantly move your workloads and data across heterogeneous environments, whilst at the same time being 100% protected. And then what we call is um, non-disruptive everything. It's non-disruptive testing to ensure that there is no impact to your production environment, which is absolutely critical when you think about continuous availability and also delivering on your compliance requirements. Um, and as I say, it's, it's really a critical component to a resilient infrastructure. And then lastly, what you see in within the platform that's built in is the analytics and control which empowers you to be able to optimize, troubleshoot, and plan with complete visibility across your multi-site, multi-cloud environments. It, it comes with intelligent dashboards so that you can analyze live and also historical data to ensure that your business um, meets the SLAs and also for you to remain compliant. And all of this is managed through a, a very simple in, um, experience, through a simple interface and management across all of your environments. So it's one interface, one simple interface across whether it's on-premises and or cloud or a mixture. And we have many customers that testify to the simplicity and the ease of use um, of the platform and experience offered by Zertus, and not only just the installation and the deployment, but the ongoing maintenance and support of it too. And I did want to highlight um, the analytics because I think sometimes we forget um, how important that it is about monitoring the, the environment to ensure business SLAs are met across your site. So as I say, whether it's on-premises or whether it's across cloud or both, so your, your entire protected uh, site itself. And this is all built into the platform. So, um, and you can also leverage a mobile. And I was at a show just before Christmas and it was interesting, a, a, a customer came up and I was talking to him and he showed me on his phone his environment and how it was working and, and how it, it was um, how he was monitoring it while he was out of the office, and it gave him the confidence so that he could actually sort of, you know, enjoy the show without having to worry about the fact that the environment um, was working okay. And in fact, if you actually look at the report, uh, there was one executive that actually said, he, I manage the environment myself using a mobile phone, and it has alerts that warn me of any problems, but as long as everything is green, then I'm good. And you no longer have to clean up things like the data domain disutilization or disconsumption or set journals. And so it saves a lot of time and that you can actually use to make sure that the DR meets the business needs. So I just wanted to highlight that a little bit more. And so in summary, you know, the platform really affords you the speed, agility, and also resilience. And Dean shared how customers are reducing costs with the unplanned and, and planned downtime. So if you think of the unplanned, which is on the left-hand side, and these are the sort of the disruptions, the outages, the failures, the ransomware, the natural disasters, user errors. These are the things that create systemic risk to the business and are a real drain on your resource and budget. And so with Zerto, you can automate the recovery of these disruptions which then in turn allows you to be able to align your resources, saving you time and costs. And these same resources that you actually have, you can start to, to align those resources to, to work on initiatives that help accelerate growth to the business that you see on the right-hand side, like modernization, cloud, consolidation, mergers and acquisitions, if that's part of your strategy. And so with the platform, you're, you're able to solve the plan and unplanned, all the while being protected, to deliver that continuous availability right across your business. 
and to your customers. And so as a result, your IT becomes more efficient, delivering you know, the speed, the agility, and the resilience. And so just to, to wrap up here before we go to Q&A, is the fact that uh, I mentioned just briefly that we have Zerto 7 launching on April the 16th. And I've added the link here to the launch webinar. We'd love you to join us to hear more about the new capabilities that we're adding into the platform to support the long-term retention. We've also adding in some other exciting new features into Zerto 7 as well. So as I say, this is the link here. Um, and that's going to be on April the 16th. And then lastly, I wanted to bring your attention to our user conference, where actually last year we announced the platform. We're going to have a lot more exciting um, announcements this year, too. And this is going to be held in Nashville. So I'm pretty excited about that. And it's going to be on May the 20th in Music City. I've also incorporated a code here, the Zweb, Zweb, that's Z-Web 30, sorry, and it's a 30% discount, that's my accent, that's a 30% discount, and you can see the, the URL, but you can always go onto justzerto.com and, and search for ZertoCon. And we've got an exciting agenda. We've got a really exciting agenda, not only are you going to hear from our CEO and SVP of products, Rob and, and Steve, so you will also hear from Peyton Manning, who is a guest speaker at the event, and also we have um, Lindsay Swartz, the CEO and GM of, of Azure Business uh, from Microsoft uh, presenting. And then of course we've got all what's new with Zerto 7. So you get the deep dive, you get there are labs and on, on um, hands-on learning and certifications. So a wealth of um, detail that we have within ZertoCon. So with that, what I'd like to do is um, open it up for any questions. Um, and um, I see in the fact that um, there was a question here. The I can't uh, can I get a copy of the slide? Well, as I mentioned, we we actually did have um, I put in the chat. Um, we put in the chat the report, the infographic. And then what we'll do is we will share the slide after the webinar. Um, so then um, there was another question here about the downtime, and maybe that's more for you, Dean. Uh, and and I, I think you talked through it, but maybe a little bit more clarification, because the question was about 10,000 downtime seems low. Can you expand on how that number was calculated? Uh, that's a good. That's a good point, Caroline. And as I mentioned in the presentation a little bit, um, obviously this is going to vary widely based on the particular application. Uh, as I said, if if you were if you were uh, a web-based business like Amazon, for example, just to pick them because they're they're pretty pretty big, um, you know your your downtime for per hour would would range into probably tens of millions of dollars. Um, other organizations are smaller and may have back office operations where uh, probably the simplest is email. Um, very few organizations lose a lot of money if their email system is down for an hour. Uh, but more commonly in the middle of those two extreme examples are, uh, for example, backups that uh, continue to force uh, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the examples that came out of the interviews was a company that had 200, about 200 people in finance who would be impacted and there was a frequent um, problem they had with the backup of their financial system. And so those employees were often impacted for one to two hours in the morning where they couldn't do any of their work um, because uh, of some of the technical things that were going on behind the scenes and the way it was set up. And so again, as we look at that type of operation, that's how we we use 10,000, not because it's necessarily representative or because it um, will predict your environment, um, but because it was a, a kind of a general average that hit the median. And I strongly encourage anyone listening to do the own, the, do, do your own analysis and understand for some of your different application environments what that cost is for your organization and plug that number in instead of using the 10,000. 
Thanks, Dean. And um, I was just uh, going through a couple of people have had some challenges with um, the link uh, for the report. So we will send out not only just the slides itself, but we will send out the report and the infographic. So you will have that post post webinar if you are having uh, difficulties. Um, there, there was a question, and, and I think I, I think I answered it, but I, I, I will answer it again. But the question was, are there additional add-ons, uh, cost for migrations or backup capabilities? And, and um, uh, as I mentioned within the platform, if you um, have the Enterprise Edition, you get all of the capabilities. So all of the capabilities that Dean spoke to, you get with the platform itself. There is no add-ons or add additional costs. And that's where there's, there's a huge differentiator when you look at other vendors, is the fact that they have a license cost for one thing and then there's all of these additional add-ons uh, to get the additional capabilities um, for that. So it's all part of one, one platform. And then there was just one more about the um, product itself, is it, it, sort of a, a client space, but we're software only. So um, I just wanted to, to answer that. And then, there was a question on um, whether or not, Dean, you could expand on the tools displaced by Zerto, the customers that you spoke with. Well, I can expand on, um, you know, the the costs that we talked about. Um, if if the if the if you're asking about which specific tools, a uh, part of Forrester's um, approach is we we don't name names, so to speak. So, um, um, you know, I want to okay. avoid. I want to avoid getting into that, but um, you know, certainly we had disaster recovery tools um, that were, again, we we priced them for a 1,000 VM environment. Um, we had um, we had backup and, and backup some specific backup and recovery uh, functions or tools that were um, at cost an average of about $185,000 per year, or at least in the first year. Um, and then the migration tools of $85,000, but that, that $85,000 only took place one time. That was a one-time purchase in the second year. So the math, the, the calculations look a little uh, interesting over three years, but I encourage you to uh, pull up the, get, you know, get a copy of the full study and you can look at that. Uh, you can see the assumptions we made in the math on page 10 of the study from Zerto. And then uh, feel free to, email, you know, my email address is in the, at the end of the, uh, back of the presentation feel free to email me if you have any questions i'd love to hear from you and and uh under, hear and see how you apply this to uh, your specific circumstances but don't hesitate to reach out great thank you um and and just um there's one last question that i see here because in the slides there was the uh pv and npv and and the question was can you explain or expand on the npv and how that's calculated. Sure. The um, a present value is, of course, a financial term that talks about that money has a value over time. You know, think of it as kind of a, the same concept of an interest rate. We get paid interest when we put money in the bank. Um, if we spend money on a credit card, we pay interest. Uh, and so in, in the financial world, we we calculate the value of money and we give it a time value. And so we, we what we do is if, if you get a if you get a benefit in the first year, it uh, would typically be the actual value. If you get a benefit in the second year, well that's a year later. So we need to discount that or reduce that by the time value of money. Uh, in this case, in, in our modeling, we used 10%. So if you were to do the math, you would find that uh, the, 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 the second year value has been reduced by, uh, um, by about 10%. The, the math's not quite just reducing it by 10%, but uh, conceptually it is. And then the third year would be reduced by two years. And so that brings you back then to what's called a present value. Um, and uh, it, it's just, a child, again, an adjustment for the time value of money. The net present value is simply the, the, net, the present value of the costs subtracted from the net present value of the benefits. 
So it's uh, from the present value of the benefits. So it's really the cost minus the benefits at a present after they've been calculated using a present value. So it's it's the net of all the present value calculations. I hope that I didn't make that even more um, more obscure than it was before. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the report goes goes through uh, yeah. and explains yeah. calculations as well. So that's great, Dean. No, thank you. So I think uh, with that, what um, uh, uh, with that, I think what I need to do is close the call and, and say thank you so much for attending, everybody. And I hope that you found the information that Dean shared with the new report, and you will be getting a copy of that. And I uh, hope you've got value out of it. Thank you, and thank you, Dean. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs>